So it's been five months using my Huawei Solar Inverter setup and I have quite some things to share. Was it really worth it buying a solar inverter, particularly this one? What are the downsides of this setup? How much have I actually saved since I got it? In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the last couple of months using this inverter and also I'll be answering some of the most common questions I got on my previous video. I wanted to mention that I bought this Huawei inverter from Fuani, Nigeria, as I mentioned in my previous video. And an update, it's got a warranty period of five years. So if there's any issue, which is something I'll touch on later in the video, you can contact Fuani, Nigeria. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. For a quick recap, I bought the Huawei Power M inverter, a 6 kVA power module inverter, and two 5 kilowatt hour lithium ion batteries. The power module cost me 1.5 million naira at the time, and each lithium ion battery cost me around 1.84 million naira, about 3.68 million naira in batteries, making my inverter setup cost just over 5.18 million at the time. This same setup now costs 6.34 million naira on the website today. I also got nine 580 watt solar panels at 148,000 naira each, costing me 1.26 million naira for the nine panels and I installed them on the roof. Adding up all the accessories and installation, it got me down to 7.26 million naira only. Assuming the accessory cost of 820k was constant today, this same setup, everything I've got here will cost you around 8.6 million naira today. So instead of spending 7.26 million naira that I spent five months ago, it's almost increased by 1.4 million naira due to inflation. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for how it has performed so far. Before I go on, let's talk terminologies and quick unit numbers. To start with, I have a solar inverter or a solar panel and inverter with batteries, which is everything I've just listed, you know, the prices of and I installed. Then I have the grid, what we call NEPA or PHCM, that is the grid. The main appliances I use in this house are the TVs. I have a 75 inch nano cell TV that should consume an average of 115 watts and a 55 inch TV that consumes an average of 160 watts. I also hooked up two air conditioners to this inverter a standing unit that should consume around 1,500 watts and a split inverter unit that consumes around 1,100 watts per hour. Then we have the fridge, which I don't think I've turned off since I got to this place. Refrigerators of this kind typically take around 300 to 500 kilowatt hours annually. Hence, on a day-to-day -day basis, they're usually around 1 kilowatt hours or 1,000 watts on average per day or less than 100 watts per hour. It's the same thing with all the light fixtures in the house and charging my computer and my monitor. It was barely consuming a lot of power during my usage. I didn't add my microwave to the inverter setup as I previously mentioned in that video and I only left it at two ACs. I also have an iron, a water heater and a washing machine. I connected the iron and the water heater to the grid because those appliances are consuming 10 times more than my other appliances. They go like 1000 to 3000 watts. Now that you have all this context, we can talk about how much power I'm actually using and how much power I'm actually saving. So I did some quick maths. In Nigeria, when we buy our units for our prepaid meters, it's usually reported to us in kilowatts. Where this house is, I spend around 50,000 Naira for 178 kilowatts of electricity units. That is roughly 280 Naira per kilowatt. From me monitoring my units, I use around 20 units per day on average, AKA 20 kilowatts per day, just from the grid. What this means is that my 50K electricity should last me around nine days. This means I spend almost 180,000 Naira per month on electricity, just as I mentioned in my previous video. My original estimate for electricity bill was around 250K per month. Because if I didn't have this inverter, that is what I'll be using. I'll be using around 30 units per day instead of 20 units per day. As you can see on my chart here, the solar inverter for this house generates around 10 kilowatt hours on average per day for me to consume. Sometimes it can generate as low as 0.1 kilowatt in a day, and sometimes it can generate as high as 17 kilowatt hours in a day as it did here. However, I had one major downside. I can't only use the inverter while I'm going to bed. Let me explain. During the day, I'm completely off the grid. Every morning, I turn off the grid switch so I'm on the inverter only for the entire day. Of course, I go to work and when I'm back, the grid comes on, aka NEPA is back to provide power. I only use it to power the inverter at night since there is no sunlight at night and I also power my water heater and the air conditioning. I noticed that when I try to keep the grid off when I come back from work at night and I did my normal activities like keeping the air conditioning on and everything else, I noticed that it only lasted about six hours for me every time. What this means is six hours on just the inverter only, no grid. So for me, from my experience at max load, this would only last for around six hours part time. And you should know with this exact setup I have, my solar panels can only generate around 5.2 kilowatt hours realistically, 580 watts times nine panels, of course. 
and that's 5.2 kilowatt hours. In fact, it may even be less, around 4.7 kilowatt hours due to inefficiencies. When it comes to the maximum input, which is how much power goes into the inverter, it's 6 kilowatt hours. But the maximum output that this inverter can supply is 5 kilowatts with the two batteries. And even if you add more batteries, it's just 5 kilowatts, as you can see on their website here. So in a way, my savings came down to about 70,000 Naira per month when I'm active in the house. But from a much broader look, I saved around 55% due to solar production. In fact, from the app, you can see that the total solar produced here is 788.58 kilowatt hours. And my total consumption is 1.43 megawatt hours. This means I produced almost half of what I consumed only from the sun, only from the solar panels. And I don't think that's bad. Okay, so let's get to the questions that you had in my previous video. The first thing people wanted to know is how long until the battery drains? Well, just as I've explained, that six hours was the sweet spot for me running at max capacity. Remember, I have a five kilowatt inverter and 10 kilowatt battery. You notice I said that it ran all day and it did run all day. When I'm out of the studio, it will run and run and consume around 100 to 230 watts per hour um, when I'm away. It will keep the fridge turned on. And in the house, we have some lights that are automatically programmed to turn on when it becomes dark. And so my appliances have their switches permanently turned on, like the TV and the air conditioner. But for the most part, that is all it does. That is all it powers. And when it's running without me, it's again, it runs and runs. But when I interfere and when I come to consume more power and I use only the inverter, it is that six hours at max for me. So I have to combine it with the grid. And that is what I've been doing. The second thing people also wanted to know was what happens when the battery charge on the inverter runs low um, whether it will charge via the solar panel or if I recharge the batteries with, other, with alternative power like a generator set. First off, I will not be using generators for some time. I haven't turned on the generators since I've installed this inverter. In this case, the battery has run low on me like three times in the past five months. The first time, we didn't have good electricity in the estate, so I kind of slept in darkness and I actually didn't notice it. The next two times, I could barely tell that the inverter died because I wasn't overly reliant on that one source. Um, the inverter died, but the grid was still on and it powered it back up once I noticed it. One thing I would say is that the inverter would last long if you are not overloading it, if you are not putting so much load on it. Just like I said, it can last all day if I didn't turn on any air conditioner. How long does it take to charge this setup? So it takes around three hours to get this from empty to fully charged with the solar panel and it can be slightly faster with the grid, but it's around that three hour timeline. So with this installation, do you still use PHD and electricity? Yes, I still do use PHCN or the grid. Off-grid dependency wasn't entirely the case for me based on those months of usage, but I only relied on the grid at night for the most part when I needed to use the heater and when I needed to use other thousand watt appliances, I had to use the grid. Can I pay in installments? No, I'm not sure something like that exists for now. Um, can they install it anywhere in Nigeria? I believe anywhere that Fuan in Nigeria is, you can actually install this. I, if I'm wrong, I'll write it somewhere here. But I believe you can. How can it be tracked if it's stolen? Omo, this is an interesting question. I've not actually thought about this. If your inverter is stolen, it's possibly because of the price tag of this thing that might attract the wrong type of attention. However, I'd say it's best to man this in a closed environment. Um, it can be operated outside a building, but I recommend installing it inside a building. It is easy to install, which can make it better for someone who steals it. But you would want to limit that interference from the start by keeping it inside. If you must keep it outside, air tags are probably your best friend or find a way to get a GPS tracker of some sort that you can hide inside it, but that can cost you some money in internet subscriptions. How many batteries will power a big house? Based on my savings and based on what I've seen, I think it would need even more than double my setup to get it to work better for me. Now, my current setup supplements my electricity for me. I truly have 247 electricity, which is what I wanted in the first place. So again, it's not completely replacing my grid dependency. For a big house, you probably need a six battery setup with two inverters. A big battery setup with two inverters can conveniently take three lamps, um, three home theaters, three TVs and consoles, a blender, two fans, one refrigerator, electric kettle, iron, microwave, air conditioner, and washing machine for almost five hours. For comparison, this is what mine can take. However, that two inverter setup will run you almost 17 million naira, and that's just for the inverter and batteries alone. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now to the next question. How can I reach your installers? They are from Fuani, Nigeria. 
I will have a link in the description below if you want to check the website. Are the batteries still good? Yes, the batteries are still good for me. The usage has stayed the same. The only thing that really fluctuates is the solar power supply um, because it can be cloudy sometimes. And when it rains, you would barely have any charge, to be honest, as much charge at least. In my previous video, I mentioned that if there's any issue, it will show up on the app. And I had an issue where there was a communication problem. I texted the installer and they somehow were able to fix it from wherever they were. They didn't have to come to my place. So that was a plus for me. Do all the appliances you mentioned still fall below the 1000 watt per hour consumption? Everything except the air conditioners and the microwave does fall below the 1000 watt per hour range. Because of the inverter, I sparingly use the big watt devices. And just as I've explained, the inverter really, really helps. Although with air conditioning turned on, taking power from the inverter, the battery drain is significant and your duration will significantly be shortened. Can the inverter carry appliances that are not inverter energy saving? Yes, it can. If you can try to find out the number of your appliance, the watt number of your appliances when it comes to power consumption, this will help you a ton when it comes to planning what you need so you don't go over capacity and regret buying the inverter or even the appliance that you are getting. The installers can actually come around to your house and take a look at your usage and appliances and help you figure out what you need. And that's what they did in my case. Can it really last for 24 hours? Well, it can. Only when I don't turn a lot of high-powered appliances on, it can. Those 1000 watts and above appliances will not make it last up to that. I think in Nigeria, most people actually use air conditioners a lot, especially if they have people around because it's quite hot here. So um, if you don't need to, you don't have to turn on your high consuming 1000 watt appliances. But if you need to, with a 1.5 horsepower um, AC consuming over 1000 watts, you are only going to get around five hours of usage, at least with my setup anyway. So you would want to be careful with usage. Maybe you might need to get like a silent fan that consumes less power or mix it with the grid like I've done, your inverter and the grid working together to give you that 247 electricity. Does the price on their site include installation and, uh, and the other accessories you mentioned? The price on their site does not include the installation and the other accessories that I've mentioned. It's just the price for the device. Why lithium ion instead of the other one, lithium ion phosphate? Thank you so much for pointing that out. It is actually lithium ion phosphate, not the standard lithium ion battery. I like the abbreviation and it's far better than the standard lithium ion to be honest. I checked the specs, this is a lithium ion phosphate. <laughs> Can it power a pumping machine? I think this heavily depends. There are submersible pumps that are less than 1 horsepower but you'd ideally want a powerful water pump that is above that maybe 2 horsepower range and your inverter may be stressed under that load and trust me you don't want to spend that much money to power a water pump and then everything else in your house is going to cost a lot. You might just I don't know. No, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Did you actually save money? I would say yes, I did. Um, if I'm going to go on the nominal value based on the calculations I made, yes, I will be saving around 70,000 naira per month. I have saved around 70,000 naira per month on my electricity bill on average. Now, if I use what I saw on the app, I have actually generated over 788 kilowatt hours worth of power from the sun. That's around 220,640 naira worth of electricity that came just from the sun. That's money that I've saved and I didn't need to pay to the grid. Then there's also the inflation of almost 1.4 million naira on top of the price that I got it, you know, then versus today. I wouldn't say this is savings, but what do you guys think? Um, did I make any mistakes in this video? Did you learn anything at all in this video? If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be right there chatting with you guys. Click here for my initial video of me getting this inverter and installing it so you can get more context as to what I'm talking about. I'll see you guys in that video.